when I'm thinking about that, I can't be thinking about stress, right? So it's that way to help control the cortisol. Five minute breaks of just like take inventory of your environment and calm down your brain. Hi, welcome to the Judy Terrell Show, where I explore topics intended to optimize every body 50, 60, 70, and above. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to your second 50 years on the planet. Thank you for joining me today. And if you are joining me today, then you are following my 15th series. And I do series of six episodes on specific topics that are related to aging well when you're over 50, men and women both. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Judy Terrell. I am a nationally board certified health coach amongst other credentials. I am 61 years old myself, and I've been working in the wellness and fitness and health industry for over 42 years. I have many, many clients I work with individually, and now I'm getting into the digital medium because I want to help um, all people that are in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and now 90s in my age demographic, the second half of our lives, to have very long, not just lifespans, but health spans, to use Peter Atiyah's language. And what that means is we don't want to just live long. We want to lo live healthfully long, so health span. And I present information on what I call behavioral medicine, tools that you can do in your everyday patterns and habits with eating, with exercise, with thinking, with stretching, with yoga, with sleep, with uh, everything related to health and well-being um, so that you can use behaviors as uh, that you do on a daily basis, um, in addition to any medications that you might be getting or, or being prescribed for you or being asked, you're being asked to consider. I'm not a, a zealot about all natural, don't use medications, um, but I am a zealot on don't just do the medications if you're not doing lifestyle changes because ultimately um, there's complications, all right? So I'm here to give you the lifestyle information and we are in the series on how to reduce blood pressure when you're over 50 for males and females because this is really a little bit more predominant in males, high blood pressure than females over 50. Um, and many of the, much of the information that's out on the internet is geared towards females only. So, you know, I'm trying to fill in that gap you know, most of my clients have significant others and they don't want to live a long health span alone. <laughs> they want their spouse to be with them. Um, so I'm giving information for both men and women. Okay. All right. So now we're in episode number four. And if you have high blood pressure and you're, you're interested in really, you know, using these tools I'm giving, you don't want to just use one. So you want to watch this episode, but go back to the other ones. And then there's uh, two more to follow um, in the series. You want to like be dabbling into all six of the things I'm presenting for tools to help to keep your blood pressure in a healthful range. Um, doing one or two is going to be better than doing none, but ultimately you want to be looking at all six I'm presenting and they're not hard. They're not complicated. So they're easy to apply if you have the right information. And that is my goal. All right. So now this is episode number four. And in episode, this episode, I'm talking about visceral fat. And if you're not familiar with what that is, visceral fat is belly fat, but it's not the fat on your belly that you can, you know, pinch. It is the fat that's inside your abdomen that is around your liver and around your kidneys and around your spleen and around your small intestines. And fat in that area, fat in general produces hormones, but when it's in that area, it kind of can interrupt the function of these other organs and cause them to not work appropriately. And the fat in the area of our bodies where there's the most organs in one particular area, then makes that fat correlated at a higher level with other chronic diseases, blood pressure being one of them. So um, if you can reduce the visceral fat, if you have high visceral fat um, in the belly, um, then you can make headway on your blood pressure because they're, they're, if one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. That's what the science is showing. So we want to work on reducing this visceral fat. All right. So now what is, how does that come to be and how do we reduce it? Right? So, you know, visceral fat around the organs. Um, I call it first on first off because it's the fat that kind of goes on, you know, if you're taking in too much, um, in particular high fast digesting carbohydrates. All right. That's one of the ways visceral fat will accumulate because when you have high fast digesting carbs, and that is your white flours, your sugars, um, even whole grain things that are not 100% whole grain. So your wraps, your bagels, your English muffins, your pancakes, your buns, your 
hamburger buns, cereals, many cereals, um, you know, pastries, baked goods. Um, these are all gluten-free products that are made from like rice flour and sorghum flour, and potato flour. So they're gluten-free, but they're still fast digesting flours. Okay. Um, so when you're eating uh, those products, it jacks your insulin up. Okay. And high insulin combined with high cortisol, which I'll get to in a minute, is going to drive the fat to the visceral fat. All right. So high insulin, you have a direct, um, you know, influence on because by your choices of what you eat. So if you have a sweet potato or a white potato, that is not going to jack your insulin up as high as it is going to be if you're having one of these net zero carb wraps, which are saying they're lower calories, but, and they've added some fiber, but they're still white flour and they are going to jack up that insulin. Um, you know, so, you know, a, uh, bean pasta versus a rice pasta, you know, one has, it's going to be slower to digest, um, because it has more fiber, natural fiber. And, um, you know, than the other, the rice flour pasta, um, or con corn pasta, for instance, um, they are going to hit the bloodstream faster. And then that brings the insulin up. Anything that's going to bring that insulin up, um, is going to be a contributor to more visceral fat. And then that of course, affecting blood pressure negatively raising it. All right. So you want to watch the fast digesting carbs and minimizing those or being mindful of trying to lower the amount so that you're lowering the insulin as a way to help control visceral fat. Um, which is a way to help control blood pressure. Now you can be doing that on the insulin side, but when you have high insulin and then high cortisol combined, that is like the Molotov cocktail for belly fat, the visceral fat. So insulin, I'm sorry, cortisol is your stress hormone. Everyone has heard cortisol now, and that is the fight or flight hormone. And when you have too much cortisol, so you're chronically stressed, not episodically where there's an event, you get stressed and you calm down. But when you're like stressed and then there's a stress and there's a stress and you're never calming down, that cortisol is not on a rhythm and it's remaining too high. And that's going to help to drive the foods that you're eating and get as they get broken down and being stored as belly fat, um, especially when the insulin is also high. All right. So I just told you about how to modify the insulin to modify the cortisol. You know, the episode I just did before this, a gratitude journal. Um, relaxation, breathing techniques, scheduling in five minute, just observe your environment breaks, like, um, as a way to get your mind off the stressors. These are three tools. Go back to episode number three in this series that can help to lower cortisol and then help, uh, minimize your visceral fat, your belly fat, and then help with blood pressure as well. And, you know, hi, everybody. I wanted to interrupt this podcast because I want to give you something. Your second 50 dot life is my virtual platform that is designed for both men and women over 50 and 60, 70 and 80. And it includes pre-recorded video information on exercise and how to do it, whether you're fit and in good health, or if you have bad knees, bad shoulders, a bad back, whatever. It includes information on how to eat for weight management and how to eat for health management. It includes information on the psychology of aging and what do we need to do in our heads? Because let's face it, this aging thing is not for the faint of heart. So your second 50 dot life is a virtual platform of resources that you can access at your own leisure, but it also includes two times a month live video coaching with me so that you can bring your own individual questions and get individual coaching, as well as have access to all the information on the pre-recorded videos. So please check it out because we're all on this together and we got this if we work as a team. All right, everybody, back to the show. Visual fat's deep inside. You can't really see it. So how do you know you have it? You know, this is this waist measurement um, that you've probably read about or your doctor might've talking to you about. For men, your waist measurement, if you're 40 inches or higher, you have visceral fat, okay? For women, if you're 35 inches or higher, you can pretty much say that you are storing visceral fat. Um, in my studio where I take clients individually, I actually have a, a machine that can measure 
where is the fat stored in your body? And it will measure visceral fat. Um, but if you don't have access to that, everyone has a tape measure. And if you measure your waist and you're over 40 for men or over 35 for women, you pretty much can say, yep, I have that visceral fat. And if you have high blood pressure, you want to really work at trying to get that visceral fat down. I just told you, you know, control for the fast digesting carbs, use some stress, like um, gratitude, toggling your mind off the negative bias. Again, if this isn't making sense to you, go back to episode number three, um, because we tend to rev up our own cortisol levels because of the way we are viewing the world through a filter of negative bias. And basically it just means seeing the negative and even when things are positive, having a yeah, but, and then like, it wasn't perfect or it wasn't good enough or I still have a long way to go. It's like you're, you're negatively biasing even the things that are positive. Um, and that increases cortisol, which then increases visceral fat, which then increases blood pressure. And just the simple thinking that way, you know, is a stressful way of thinking. And that, of course, is directly related to blood pressure as well. But I'm talking about the visceral fat in this episode and the high cortisol with the high insulin combined, creating visceral fat and then making that even more difficult for blood pressure to come down. So we want to address this visceral fat. So, um, you know, using the tools I just said about the cognitive, moving yourself to a positive bias, a gratitude bias, and then controlling for fast digesting carbs is two, are two ways to help control the, the two main factors that come together uh, hormonally that create the visceral fat. Another thing that you can do to help to get the visceral fat back down, um, even if you're not doing those other two things, but in combination with them would be the best way is, you know, to move. Like you want to get yourself, um, you know, breathless. You know, if you see, you go out for a walk and then you see a hill, like, like pump it up the hill, get breathless because that higher level of exertion for you, whatever breathless is for you, that might not be the same as somebody else, but breathless for you for like 30 seconds maybe four times on a walk, walk really fast, get your heart rate up and get breathless. You know, you see a hill, walk up that hill really fast, take four, 30 seconds, 15, 15 to 30 seconds of getting breathless. The demand for the fuel is really high in, and your body will go into that visceral fat to get it because it's, it's more readily available to the liver um, in that moment than the stored body fat. So getting, doing this kind of episodic hit training. That's what that is. High intensity interval training, but that sounds very scary to many of my clients that are in their sixties and seventies and eighties. You know, I'm just talking about get breathless, you know, um, walk up the stairs a little more briskly if you can walk upstairs. And, um, that's another way to do it. If you're in your house, you know, walk around the couch or the dining room table, you know, on a commercial during, a, um, you know, a show you're watching and you just get breathless. Um, and then let your body calm back down and do that four times while you're watching a show. That's another way to do it. But that breathless level of exertion, I know it's scary. A lot of times people are like, oh, my heart rate's so high. Is that bad for me? No, it's actually good if it's controlled and it's not high because of stress or, you know, um, an injury or something else. Um, you know, blood not being able to get to the heart. But for blood pressure regulation, to get breathless in these intervals is a very good method for helping to control blood pressure and helping to uh, control visceral fat. All right. So, and controlling visceral fat is a way to help control blood pressure. All right. So in this episode, the, the takeaway is if I'm trying to help my blood pressure, one of the things I can do is, is measure my waist. And if I'm above these levels, 40 for men and 35 for women, the waist is right at the belly button, you know, or actually it's the narrowest part of your waist. So wherever you go in a little bit, and if you don't go in, then it's like the narrowest part is the one you're measuring. Um, so if you're over, over 40 for men and over 35 for women, then you have visceral fat. And then you want to do like, you want to modify the fast digesting carbohydrates. So you don't spike up your insulin. You want to bring in some practice to help to control cortisol, um, a gratitude journal, like uh, longer exhale breathing. So any stress release breathing technique, you can Google that, you know, calming breaths, uh, Google, you know, and then you'll get some very easy to follow ones, but breathing to calm you down, taking five minute breaks to just be present to your environment as a way to calm down. Your, you can't think of two things at once. So if you're thinking about, okay, if you're in this room, right, I see the refrigerator, I'm seeing my screen, this is the counter. When I'm thinking about that, I can't be thinking about the stress, right? So it's that way to help control the cortisol. Five minute breaks of just like take inventory of your environment and calm down your brain. Um, and then get breathless with these like 15 to 30 second breathless intervals of exercise of, of, of output. 
Those are three very, very effective methods for helping to minimize visceral fat um, and then in so doing, helping to control blood pressure. All right, everybody, this is episode number four on my six-part series on how over 50 men and women can help control their blood pressure. I hope you're getting some pearls. Um, if you are, I invite you to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe. Um, I have a platform called yoursecond50.life. It's a subscription, but it's vetted information uh, addressing issues for men and women both, but over 50, 60, 70, 80, because a lot of stuff that's out on the internet can be very misleading. And sometimes the information you're getting from your clinicians is not specific to your demographic, your age. So everything I'm putting out is, and so it's a consolidated and uh, you don't have to spend time trying to figure out what's right for you and what's not. This is for information for people over 50 on exercise, on stress management, on eating, on um, sleep, um, everything related to health. Uh, please check that out. Uh, thank you for coming and watching this video. Go back and watch the others. Stay tuned for the next two in the series. Um, it is my agenda to help everybody in my demographic to live long and healthful lives and lifespans. Um, we're all in this together. We all want a sense of community as we age and not be the last man standing. Um, I, you know, want to help you and, uh, we got this, we got this and I'm going to help. And if you'd like to have access to some of my additional resources, I can be found at Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on my website, www.judyterrell.com.